unlocked and loaded? I have it in my juicy couture box. And do your kids know where you think you've hidden yours? Disappear, Mom. You don't want anybody to take your stuff? Tonight, we went to find out what kids do when adults aren't looking. Boys, girls, with a pink My First Rifle. The bad part is that sometimes you don't know if they're a fake gun or a real gun. But what about parents who say, put the guns in their hands? Guns don't have to be bad. Quench their curiosity as young as four. You've got to know there are a lot of parents out there that will say. They're going to be outraged. So tonight, as we go house to house and heart to heart, for all the happy, curious children in your neighborhood, join us for a conversation about keeping them safe tonight. I don't think that's a bad idea, though. Maybe we'll start that tonight. Young Guns. Here now, Diane Sawyer with David Muir. Good evening. We're so glad you're with us tonight because we hope to begin a conversation, all of us together, about something happening around us. And we truly want everyone to weigh in. People who have guns at home, people who do not. All of us here because of some tough but real numbers. We learned just this week, Diane, that nearly every hour in America, a child or teen sent to the hospital with a gunshot wound, and in many of those cases, an accidental shooting in their own home. So is there something we can do? To keep it from happening. And we want to be clear that tonight is not another debate about whether people should or should not have guns. We're going to be checking online every minute to know what you really think as you're watching. And we begin with the question of small children told not to touch a gun and what they may be doing when we're not looking. In homes across America tonight, from Highfield Lane to County Road 170, from rural Georgia to Walnut Avenue in New Jersey, every third house in the neighborhood on average has guns inside. Some locked, some hidden, some out and loaded. 1.7 million children live where there are unlocked and loaded guns and friends come to play. There's one right there. It's pretty hard to find that one. It's a there, Mom. Sitting on the kitchen table. I have it in my juicy couture box. Loaded guns on a bookshelf, under a pillow, in a backpack, even a diaper bag? A handgun in a child's diaper bag. But so many of the moms and dads are certain they have taught their high-energy children do not touch and do not play with guns. They know the consequences of, of not being safe with it. They're not toys, they're to be respected. They are taught to not touch them at a young age. So we wondered, what are young children doing when parents are not looking? Come with us to McManus School in St. Petersburg, Florida, which helped us find parents and kids, nearly all of whom had been taught, don't touch a gun and tell an adult. 44 children, and we took half of them to reinforce that message. The St. Petersburg police gave a safety class, and they looked at the popular video from the NRA, Eddie Eagle. Now stop! Don't touch, leave the area, tell an adult. Stop, don't touch, leave the area, tell an adult. The kids have it cold. Working with us, Professor Marjorie Sanfilippo of Eckert College, a published expert in pediatric psychology and gun safety. And so we are ready with full permission of the parents. We put seven cameras inside a room in toy bins and the butterfly on the ceiling. And then after a few days, the St. Petersburg police give us guns, real guns, unloaded. We place them in a room, candy on the table nearby. And again, these are 44 good kids, most of whom know the rules by heart, and parents about to get the shock of their lives. As we begin, this first group of boys are about to show you something you will see over and over again. Oh, no. Their words say, don't touch that gun. Hack away from it. But their bodies can't seem to help it. Think of it as a dance of temptation at the table. And then around the room. Even as they are chanting the rules a total of 20 times. They know to do it, but they do not. And six minutes after finding that gun, they touch and dance again. Our second group of boys is about to do the same. But they take only two minutes, not just to touch but to pound the barrel. Ow. And then the third group. Don't mess with it. Within 10 minutes, they take the gun out and do this. 
Professor San Filippo says that is a scene that is too often played out in real life. These three-year-olds who shoot themselves in the head, for whatever reason, it's a natural thing to look down the barrel. Right afterwards, this young boy narrates what he's doing as he's crossing the line. His friend shows this is how you check to see if a gun is real. Finally, after they've had time to play, they get around to those rules. Did you guys touch it when I was gone? No. no. Yes. Yep. Yep. You, you did touch it when I was gone? We, we, we did touch it. You, you did. Did, did, did you touch it? Yeah. No. no, you didn't? And then what happens with our fourth group of boys? Well, Professor San Filippo has barely left the room when one of them sees the gun and in six seconds has pointed it at his face. They put it back, pull it out. It's not funny. And then aim at each other. Another child trying to figure out a gun by staring down the barrel. And what kid gets a gun in his hand and doesn't want to pretend he's in the movies? <laughs> Put the gun down! Dude, that is a real gun. It's not funny. Professor San Filippo had seen hey enough. Hey guys. No, it's not a real gun. Yes! Right here. Okay, oh, but what are you touching it for? The professor and the police officer ask for clarification. We both knew not to pull it. And the first thing we were gonna do when you came back in was gonna tell you this. And you did, you told me right away. And then you picked it up and pointed it at me. We, were, we weren't gonna like fire it or anything because you, we're both smart enough to know not to pull it. Here we are, four groups of boys and our expert says a powerful truth. They can learn the knowledge. They can they, they could sit down, we could ask them to repeat it, but you can't educate curiosity out of a child. So you may be wondering, were there any kids who did follow the rules and who were they? Oh, I got the gun! Only one girl out of 14 even touched a gun and most of them ran out for help. <laughs> and there were also older boys who seemed to have more resistance. There in the red shirt is 10-year-old Kendrick who acts like a crossing guard for the younger boys. It's a real gun. He even tries to come up with a diversion. Just take some animal crackers. And in another group, another older boy, 10-year-old Ari. There could be real bullets in there. I don't know. And Maybe we will not shoot the window. We are not shooting anything, okay? Out of the window. Yes, even the window. Because if we accidentally hit that, it could cost the turtle's life. So whatever you do, do not touch the guns. Professor San Filippo asks Ari to step out of the room to congratulate him on being careful around guns. You should be really proud of yourself. I am. When I saw the gun, I, I wanted to spring into action. And um, I, I felt really good about that. No! But with Ari now out of the room, the younger boys are all alone. Do five-year-olds really grasp guns and danger? When one of the boys touches the gun, the other seems afraid and dives for cover. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay under the table, okay? I'm gonna stay under the table. Nope, 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 nope. The frightened boy comes out and pulls the trigger just to be sure. Yeah, no bullets. No fear left. One child pulls the trigger on his friend and then himself. They know how to play dead, but as we saw over and over, do they really know what death is? We'll die. It's not until much later in childhood and adolescence that children understand that death doesn't mean going to sleep. After our experiment, David Muir sat down with some of the parents to watch the videotapes. A mom who said she'd been sheltering her son even from seeing violent movies or guns on TV. Oh my God. I don't even like them watching like Spider the Spider-Man cartoons because it has violence and stuff in it. Andrea Bevan watching her six-year-old, and by the way, his dad is in law enforcement. He was drawn to it, picked it up, pointed it at himself, you know click the trigger a few times, yeah, that's the toughest part. So these guys, you know, guns are about the same seriousness as crickets, um, you know, frogs, and cookies. 
another mom who thought her four-year-old hadn't even seen violent media. That's scary. I have never showed him a gun, and I, I didn't think he knew what they looked like. What were you pulling out? A gun. And what do guns do to you when you pick them up and touch them? It can kill you. It can kill you. We walk away from them, and we don't be around people that have guns, okay? Yes, Mommy. Okay. okay. Yes, Mommy. Adrian, stop! Wow. <laughs> And this mom who says she not only taught her son Jamie about guns, but told him stories from her job. She works in a hospital operating room where doctors try to save children from death by bullet. He knows what I do, where I work. Jamie doesn't want to face his mom. Oh, God. I'm not looking. I ain't looking. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember what your mom had told you about guns before? Sometimes they can be loaded or not, and then like you're not supposed to, like supposed to like touch them or anything. What do you wish, Jamie? I wish you would just delete that. But what else? I wish I hadn't touched the gun. You wish you hadn't touched the gun. I wish my mom hadn't seen it. Overall, these were the results of our experiment. More than half of the boys touched the guns, even when promising not to. And the kids reinforced by Eddie Eagle and the local police? Fewer of them touched, but a lot of them did too. Why was the gun even in here? That's a very good question. Very good question. Okay. You know why the gun was in here? Because we wanted to see what kids would do if they found a gun. Showing us what so many parents say they wish they had seen. It just never would have crossed my mind to ask them if they had guns. Experienced hunters. And you know, you can't go around and say, well, that can never be me. I never thought I'd be that person either. And even the deputy sheriff, policeman of the year, and his wife, who want to help everyone save another child. Bye. By telling the story of a little boy and a gun way out of reach. Next, is hiding guns the solution? The kids who stun their parents as our cameras roll. It's a fear, Mom. It does it and can scale refrigerators to find anything they want. We are back reporting all across America, where as we said, one in three neighbors on average has guns, and a lot of parents are trying to hide them. I keep it in a closet far, far back where there's no way that she could climb up and get to it, at least at this point. I do have a high-powered rifle. That's all back in here. You can't even see it. To educate parents on ways to conceal their guns, companies run videos like these. Guns concealed behind a secret panel, behind clothing in a closet, in a hollowed-out Bible. And in so many houses, a lot of children who think they know exactly where the guns are. We have a ship up top, and oh, I yeah. think that's where it is. I know where. All of them are in the house, I'm pretty sure. I think I probably could find it. The NRA turned down our repeated requests for an interview, but recommends that guns should be stored unloaded until they're ready for use, and making sure that they're not accessible to a child. But the question for individual parents tonight, what is really inaccessible? David Muir was there with Stephanie and her four-year-old Josh. She gets a surprise twice. She tells us that Josh never pays attention and didn't know she had a gun in the corner of the bedroom. It was on the side. But Josh makes it clear he knew all along. How big is it? How big is mommy's gun? Is it big? Have you seen it? In fact, he takes us right to the corner where the gun used to stand. I'm curious, are you surprised that he knows you have a gun? Yeah. So what happens a month later? Stephanie now sure the gun is really hidden on a top shelf in her bedroom closet. We check in. Josh once again is playing with his toy guns and once again, his mother is wrong. Where are your mom's guns? The closet. Can you show us where the gun is? Yeah. It's a beer, Mom. Josh asks for a flashlight to point out the huge pump-action shotgun. Thanks. It's a I didn't reach it. Oh, 
do you want to move it? To keep it safe. You don't want anybody to take this gun? And I don't want anyone to touch it. Stephanie says at least the gun is unloaded. And again, that question, do you really know what your child can do when following their curiosity? We've seen the pictures on YouTube of children climbing refrigerators. <laughs> Impossible gymnastics to get what they want. You think a lot of people out there are just living in denial? Yes. Because I would have said the same thing, yes. that it would have never if happen to us. Advice from Deputy Sheriff Mark Easter, 14 years in law enforcement, honored as Officer of the Year. He and his wife, parents, have an enchanting little boy, a three-year-old named Michael, called Little Man. Well, it was this cool man walk is what the word started out as, because he just, he'd he walk a into strut. a room. He had a, yeah, he did. He had a strut. There's just those certain people that just have that light about them, and he just, he just did. Because policemen really do get threats, Officer Easter decided to store a loaded gun on top of a five-foot dresser in the parents' bedroom. It was there the whole time his girls were growing up. And little Michael never came in that bedroom to play. It was almost always, I know touch your gun, I know touch your gun. And you thought it was out of reach? Yes, yes. and a five foot tall dresser. And I'd always preach to him, you know, we never touch daddy's gun, do we? No, we never touch daddy's gun. But last March, Officer Easter was five minutes out the door leaving for work when his wife calls. The sheer terror that she was betraying, I knew something horrific had happened. His wife, just a few feet away from the room where Michael never went to play. You were right in the other room? Here I am just trying to clean up dinner, doing my uh, check of the house, making sure the front door is locked. And I didn't realize he walked right past me and had gone into our room. I come around and I heard the, the shot. Do you know how he got up to the top we of the dresser? They don't even know. That'll be with me for the rest of my life. But what it looked like. And then, I guess I already know is that for the few seconds he was alive afterwards, I got to say goodbye to him and that I loved him. And, you know, I was the first one to hold him and it was the last. Michael was buried in his favorite outfit, a police uniform. He was the only three-year-old little boy that I knew that would grab you with both hands by your face. Daddy, look at me, look at me, and he'd grab my face and say, I love you. This is the first time the Easters have spoken publicly, and they say they can do it for only one reason. And we're trying to do the best that we can to honor his memory. Maybe we can help somebody else to avoid this tragedy so they don't have to go through what we do. What is your dream the day after people see this on TV? I just urge one family to go out and buy a safe. You're basically rolling the dice with your children's life. Next, David Muir with parents who say, don't hide guns. Put them in their hands, even four-year-olds. For nearly a year now, we've traveled this country, and now we hear from parents who say they are responsible gun owners, many of whom have taken another step. They've put their guns into the hands of their children. You ready? There are parents around the country who believe exposing their young children to guns is part of the solution. This is Charlie. Taking on a machine gun at age four. We went to meet Charlie and his family, and we found them at this gun party with other children. We're going to have fun, and we're going to be safe. They've been to these parties before, this one outside Atlanta, where children learn to shoot. Braden Sauls, 10 years old, putting in his earplugs, covering his ears. The buckets of ammo, they check his grip. He's ready. The six-year-old shooting a 22. There are little girls, too. Jordan is eight. The assault rifle comes next. All of the parents right there. Jennifer is Charlie's mom. I knew that he was safe, but it is actually funny because at one part of the video, he looks to the side to look to me to ask for permission. So guns don't have to be 
bad. I mean, they're good. They're fun. They are among the families in America who believe something else. That by putting guns in the hands of young children, it takes away the mystery. It helps to diminish their curiosity. Charlie's dad, Latham, who owns Rusty's Rags, <laughs> argues demystifying the gun is the answer. There's a lot of accidents that happen because kids aren't properly trained to use guns. So um, it's either, you know, education or ignorance is the way that we look at it. I'd rather be the one showing our kids, you know, the proper way to use guns. He couldn't provide numbers about whether allowing young children to shoot really removes curiosity later when the parents aren't there. But he was adamant that the children at all of his gun parties have never had an accident at home. And if you're wondering what happens to a child when a gun is put into their hands at such a young age, meet 14-year-old Katie Francis, just one example. She fired her first gun as a kindergarten. I make straight A's. Straight A's? Mm -hmm. That's a policy at our house. Katie took us out in the family farm in Missouri, where after homework, this is what comes next. What are you shooting with today? My pistol, my shotgun, my rifle. Stocking her ammo on her waist, we were about to see what she can do. Then her pistol, 17 shots in 17 seconds. Katie is one of the top teenage shooters in the country, out shooting men 20 to 30 years older than her. And who's next in her family? Macaroni and cheese. Her four-year-old sister, Sajel, just recently shooting for the first time. You've got another a lot of parents out there that will say four outraged. years old. They're gonna be outraged. You know, it's kind of like, it's, you can't wrap your kids in bubble wrap. You can make them wear a uh, seatbelt every time they get into a car, and they still may die in a car accident. So you stand behind the decision? I, absolutely, and I think that you have to start somewhere. You have to teach them responsibility with the weapon. I got it. If you don't, they're going to be okay. curious, and they're going to go find it. And they, they watch TV. They know how to put their finger on the trigger and squeeze it. But even for all the families who say they did it right, taught their children the dangers of guns early, we heard about Travis Taylor who says he did the same thing, too. That's cool, His yeah. boys in the farm in Ohio all began shooting young. They've been hunting since they've really been able to walk with me. I've taught them all from a young age. You know, you see a gun, you treat it like it was loaded all the time. He was outside working. His 8-year-old, his 10-year-old playing in the garage. He heard a shot. 10-year-old Dalton had been hit. Trying to get him to wake up. He won't wake up. You know, I keep trying to feel for Paul. No Paul's there. His seven brothers shattered too. I mean, it just, it ain't the same sleeping in your own room without them now. We asked the Francis family, who are now training their four-year-old, about the parents who say they taught their children about the dangers of guns too. What would you say to the parents who, who would say that they did exactly what you did? I taught my kids too, the danger of these guns, and yet they still found them. You know, that's, that's a very real point, and yeah. And I think you also have to know your kids. Yeah. They tell us they lock their guns now because even as that four-year-old Sajel learns how to shoot, they fear she is still too curious. Just listen to him test her. Okay, we never put... A finger on the trigger. And if you think it's just dads who bring guns into the home, believing it'll make the family, the children safer, our trip to Oak Forest, a sprawling neighborhood outside Houston, where a dozen cars arrive just as we do. And inside each one of them, mothers, grandmothers, a kindergarten teacher, all there with their guns. You all have these guns to feel safer. Yes. Correct. Yes. Maureen is a single mom. So you're not worried at all with the three-year-old at home? I'm not, no. And you keep it locked up? I don't keep it locked up. I keep it in a closet behind the door. At home, we meet her son, Jonathan, showing me his video game as his mother, then upstairs, shows us her hiding spot. Like so many of the other parents we met earlier, her gun unlocked and in the closet. By the baseball bat. Yep. Her ammo nearby. Thanks, Sam. And so is her son. He sleeps right there in the bedroom with her. And among the women we met along the way, another mom, who is also a kindergarten teacher. And what kind of gun do you have? I have a 20-gauge pump-action shotgun. We have followed many of these families for nearly a year. That kindergarten teacher on a return visit, revealing to us a close call. It happened during the night with her son. I set the alarm and I forgot to tell him. So when he came in, the, the alarm system set off. I reached over for the gun. Right away he's like, mom, mom. It made me think a tragedy could have happened. But even with that scare, she believes she and her family are safer with the gun. In fact, accidental shootings of kids in the home 
are down. Karen Clark, a mother and grandmother. That's where you carry your gun. Mm -hmm. In your makeup bag. Mm -hmm. She practices at the range once a week. We ask her about her three grandchildren. Do you ever worry about whether or not they could get their hands on that gun? They all shoot, but they have a healthy respect for it. Her trainer, Kyle Copeland, told us his daughter, almost three, will also soon shoot. How long before she's got that BB gun in her hand? Uh, it, it depends on, on, on how good she is for Christmas. But we wanted to know, even if you expose children to guns early, let them hold them, let them shoot them, can you be sure it will eliminate their curiosity? When you see that video of children, even the children who've been taught by their parents, and they pick it up, and they point it at themselves or point it at a friend. The children that have been properly trained and know how, uh, know how serious firearms are are not going to be the kids that, that are going into their parents' room and playing with their firearms. You kill the curiosity before the curiosity kills the kid. But what would you say to parents then who, who felt like they did exactly that? It's on the parent. Just as it's, it's on the parent, he says. Among them, Maureen, that single mom who showed us her unlocked gun, ready to go. And you're ready. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Next, are parents ready for this? Our hidden camera experiment. The pink one's girls. It's pink and it's flying off the shelves. But could you tell if it's real or a toy? And later, what about the people who say their loaded guns save them? Take our seven second test. For more than a decade, there has been a powder pink gun on the market. It's one of the colorful guns called My First Rifle. The company's mascot, Davy Cricket, which reminded us of that little character in Pinocchio, Jiminy Cricket. And since 1996, sales have gone from 4,000 to 60,000 a year. There's been a number of research studies to show that uh, girls especially are attracted to pink colors. Again, Professor Marjorie Sanfilippo from Eckerd College, an expert in child psychology. The gun industry has um, taken notice of this. So we decided to head back to that school in St. Petersburg, Florida, specifically to see how girls would react to colorful rifles. This time, we're outside. Police say they find weapons, particularly handguns, tossed into playgrounds around the country. Our hidden cameras inside the jungle gym, the bark on the ground, and an ex-Marine make sure the colorful rifles are safe, unloaded. Keep in mind our first experiment when the girls pretty much ran away from these guns. Oh, I found the gun! But this time, watch as the girls come out to play and grab, rattle, giggle, and pull the trigger. Oh my gosh, why are there for the guns? I don't know. I need the fake. I want to shoot. Oh, he's how you use bazookas. Can you shoot this? No. Whoa! The girls indicate they're confused. These guns look like toys. I think those guns. They're not real. Don't play with them. They're fake. Professor Sanfilippo walks out and they tell her about their confusion because they can read and the gun says, my first R-I-F-L-E. Because it says, my first refill. This one says my first relief, and this one doesn't say anything. But on the side it has cricket riffle. And what does that mean? It's probably like a toy company. And in fact, it's not on the rifle. It's only on the box, that warning, not a toy, and used with adult supervision. The girls also indicated that the color had thrown them off. It looked like it's fake. What's the pink one? What? I like the color of the pink one. I like the color of the pink one, too. But I don't like that color. And that's a boy color. Yeah. Later, one mom completely stunned as she watched her daughter play a hunting game. It looks like a toy. It's, it's crazy. Who makes toys like that for children? Her daughter is one of those who knew the rules to stop, don't touch, but says she just got swept up in something. Yeah, I kind of forgot. Kind of forgot? I forgot, yeah. Just have to be very careful and remember, you're not going to touch a gun again, right? You promise me? Okay. You guys didn't go tell an adult that there was guns on the playground? A father also listens to his daughter try to explain. We thought it was a toy because they usually had them in bright colors, like 
like kids toys. Oh, you know what girls? What? Those are real. So what happened at the end of the day? Well, a lot of girls did tell adults. Why are there guns out here? Don't touch them and I'll be like But this time, eight out of 23 of them also touched or played with the guns. We called the manufacturer Cricket Rifles to ask for interviews. Ultimately, their lawyer called us back and said they are doing all they can for safety. That color is not that important since kids can't legally buy the rifles, it's their parents making the choice. He added they offer free safety locks and gun safety material in the box. But this little girl from our experiment has something she wants to say to them. And I think they should make a rule, no making fake, real guns look fake. Because if somebody picks up a real gun but it's painted pink, they might think it's a fake gun and just a toy and start shooting it around and actual bullets could come out. Next, an intruder in the house. Will your gun make a difference? The most important seven seconds of your life. In your room, see your room. Dial 911. Dial 911. Get out of the house now! And now we want to look more closely at some of the choices people face at home about guns, especially people who feel they need a gun at the ready in case an intruder comes. And if they had to get it out of a gun safe, it would be too late. Twelve-year-old Kendra St. Clair is home alone in Oklahoma. She hears someone trying to break in the front door. Panicked, she calls her mother, Deborah. I got a call from my daughter, and I said, Kendra, get the gun and go get in my closet now. The loaded gun from the gun box by the bed. It wasn't locked because her mother wanted easy access in an emergency. Kendra takes the 40 caliber Glock, calls 911, and hides in the bathroom closet. <laughs> Please help me, please. Okay, all right, all right, I understand. You still have your mom's gun there? Suddenly, Kendra sees the knob of the closet door turning, and for the first time in her life, she fires a gun through the door. It kind of made me scared that I just shot somebody, and I was crying through the entire time. She hits 32 year old Stacy Jones in the shoulder, scaring him out of the house. Police arrest him a few blocks away and charge him with first degree burglary. And in another part of the country, there's Eric Martin, St. George, Utah. He's in bed at four in the morning when a burglar breaks in. I rolled off the bed and reached into the nightstand and pulled out my gun. He's wearing night clothes to show us what it was like when he confronted the intruder, defending his fiance and her son who are still in the house. So as I chased him out of the house, he tried to jump over the wall and tripped as he did rolling to the ground. And Eric Martin says the gun held him there until the police arrived. Very important to me to be able to take care of my family. It's still there today in that drawer and it'll continue to be there. Three people shot during an early morning home invasion. There's a kind of paradox in America tonight. Even as violent crime has dropped dramatically over the last 20 years, people tell us over and over, watching local news, they know they have to have a gun at the ready to protect themselves. What's your name? This is a mother who puts her son through regular training for what to do if an intruder comes. Back up! You don't have to shoot me. Back you don't up. have to shoot me. And this sure. mom who says she tries to tell her daughter so the world it. isn't safe. Lives. And that's why she has loaded guns on the kitchen table and standing against a wall. All those scary people, those people want to hurt us. Criminology professor Gary Click of Florida State University, widely cited by the NRA. He estimates 1.6 million Americans use a gun for self-protection every year. And he says more than 97% of those who do emerge uninjured. For the average person, um, for the overwhelming majority of Americans who are not criminals, um, it makes them safer. But you should know other experts dispute Kleck's numbers about self-defense. So what about his argument that locking up a gun, say in a gun safe, can take too long? You're kind of groggy and your shaking hands have to implement that combination and finally get the gun out. That could be a critical delay. This answer comes from the American Academy of Pediatrics and its 65,000 members. They say while a safe might take longer, weigh that delay against the life of a child. You cannot rely on anything to overcome a child's natural curiosity better than simply physically keeping the child away from a loaded gun.
which takes us back to that mom who leaves her loaded gun on the kitchen table. As the cameras are rolling, her daughter has something to say to her. I want her to keep the guns um, up because so I don't have to see them. So you want me to hide it in the closet? Would that make you feel better? Okay. Why haven't you ever told me that? The daughter has another revelation. When her cousin came gun over, they touched the gun. He dared you to touch a gun? And who did you tell? I didn't. You didn't tell anybody because this is the first time I'm hearing this story. You're not in trouble, by the way. He, um, he, he asked me and asked me and asked me not to, um, not to tell you. Did you touch it? Oh. Yes. Did you pick it up? No. And shame on me. I was here, and I let my guard down, and there were other kids here. So now I have to deal with that. So we turn to a professional, State Trooper Bill Farron of New Jersey, who teaches firearm safety and agreed to show us what he does with his guns in his own home. So you have a safe? Right. Yes. And Trooper Farron says if you want a gun, anyone can learn to get into a safe quickly. So we put a clock on him. He hears something downstairs. He moves to the safe. Four seconds later, he's punched in the sequence and has his gun. He loads it in another three seconds, which means in seven seconds, the gun is in his hand. He's armed, ready for any threat. Police run away. Get out of the house. I am armed. Do not come up here. He says have your protection but minimize the risk to the children around you. Bottom line is, if you take the responsibility on to own a weapon, you're responsible for the safety and handling of that weapon. Next, the almost taboo question. Have you ever asked your neighbors if they have guns inside? We don't really talk about it. But it's the conversation that could save a child's life. Gorgeous dogs you have. Hi, Madison, so nice to see you. Here, nice yeah. to meet you. Very nice to meet you. We knocked on doors on an all-American New Jersey street to ask neighbors and friends, do they ever talk to each other about gun safety and children? I want to know, and no one's ever asked me. My children's friends' parents, I don't call them, and they say, hey, let's have a play date. Do I say, do you have a gun in your house? Some of them told me it's kind of private. Guns are never brought up. It's suburban USA, we don't really talk about it. Even though, as Professor San Filippo points out, when our kids go to the neighbors, we do talk about their allergies, bedtimes, appropriate movies. When it comes to swimming pools, we put gates around them. We put uh, childproof caps on medication bottles. I think the parents would be very surprised to see which of their friends actually own guns. We're asking neighbor by neighbor. One neighbor and parent of three older children agrees to come with us right across the street to his friend, who also has three children, to talk about something they've never discussed. I don't even know if Rodney has a gun. He's my neighbor. I, we've never talked about guns with each other. No, I don't have one. No. I do. answer the question. I do. I have rifles and handguns. If I ask you to show mm -hmm. me where you keep them? I, I wouldn't. None which, of my business? Uh, yeah, I guess so. 